for Glia? Father, you're right. I did leave Pendleton, but I'm still a part of this family. I'll never forget everything that you and Carla have done for me, so please... The time for remission has long passed. It was your decision to leave. Once you've made a decision, you must commit to it and accept its consequences. <sighs> I understand. Then I have a proposal. As the owner of Le Petit Fleuriste, I propose a business arrangement. What did you say? We at Le Petit Fleuriste offer to provide investigative services to Pendleton. We will confirm the safety and whereabouts of Carla Pendleton, your chief of sales. As compensation, we seek the white sarin flowers that bloom across Altago. We understand you have these seeds in stock, and ask that you give us a courtesy discount. We will also require you to provide any and all information relevant to the investigation. Do you have any idea what you're suggesting? How can I partner with a flower shop from the slums with no reputable achievements? A man with your merit and experience should be able to tell if we are trustworthy. What? Under the conditions I propose, Pendleton would incur no liabilities. Like you said, 
our shop is still small. That is why we offer to shoulder the risk. As someone once told me, gains are made by taking losses. You'll be up against the Hieroglyph Knights, who are on the brink of war against the Empire. What can a lone flower shop do? We won't saddle you with the details. I know Pendleton is busy enough as it is. But I can guarantee that the results will be satisfactory. Hmm. Miss Krisha. Impressive. Krisha, why is it only now that you're able to do this? Turns out, I had a lot to learn from opening a shop of my own. At first, I was afraid to even decide on order quantities without you and Carla. But if I wanted to keep my shop open, I knew I had to make decisions on my own. I couldn't run away like I used to, even from things I wasn't good at. It was just common sense thinking back. I'm embarrassed it took me so long to learn. Hmm. So it was I who stifled your growth. That's not true at all. Without you and Carla, I would have never learned the things I needed to get to this point. I could have never done this on my own. That's why I have to save Carla. <sighs> I filed a complaint with the Roman garrison for what happened to Carla. But Warden Belger wasn't there, so it was a fruitless endeavor. Huh? Was any and all information relevant to the investigation not one of your conditions? Father! Alas, the garrison didn't have any information, but for whatever reason, the knights did. According to them, Carlo was detained on suspicion of colluding with the Monstrums. Really? Does that mean... The charges alone aren't enough to incite suspicion. For all we know, they could be true. I'm sure Carla's reasons would have been justified. It was the fact that they had the gall to arrest someone from Pendleton without consulting me. Considering my relationship with them, it is a most unwarranted and concerning act. <laughs> They're not even bothering with keeping up appearances anymore. Or maybe they don't need to. I can't believe it. My personnel in the mines report that the Knights often meet in the prison's restricted sector. Rumors are circulating that the Knights are holding their newly captured prisoners there. The restricted sector? Maybe Carla's there too! It is a possibility. That's all the information I have about Carla at the moment. Thank you, Father! I can't believe they intend to rebel against the Empire by usurping the Governor General. While it's true the Empire did invade Glia, it's better governed under them than the royal family. I think the current events are a necessary step in history, but a rough one nonetheless. Mr. Pendleton... I'll send word if I get any more information. Uh, and, uh... Be careful. I will! <clears throat> uh, one last thing about your shop. Its location lacks visibility and is disadvantageous to your exposure. Even small changes can bring about vast improvements to your business's image. Remember what I've taught you. Uh, okay. Thank you, Father.
Glad to see you are okay. What's wrong? Yes. I had forgotten something very important to me. When Aprilis was pierced by that sword, that is when I remembered. Long ago, I was once a doll that was given to a certain little girl. She belonged to a common farming family though they lived comfortably. As this girl's doll, I watched as she grew into a proper young woman. Those were modest, peaceful days. I thought they would continue as they were forever. That was until the girl, Rosfida, was discovered to be a saint and sent off to war. I'm going now, Anamona. I'll be back before you know it, so be a good girl and wait for me, okay? When the war is over, we'll have a wonderful tea party together, like we always do. And those were the last words she ever spoke to me. You mean Saint Rosvita? You were Saint Rosvita's doll? If those memories came back after seeing Aprilis' final moments, does that mean... I'm not entirely sure yet. But there was one other thing I remembered. As time went on while she was away, I found myself spending time with another human. I called him Papa. Happy birthday, Anamona. For today will be the first day of your life. Now open your eyes and look at me. Stretch your legs and feel the land beneath your feet. Papa was the one who gave me a soul and a conscience. Is that even possible? Who the hell is this guy? Unfortunately, I haven't remembered much more than that. But something inside me tells me Papa is much closer than we realize. Perhaps more of my memories will return with time. Anamona.
Ugh, that should do it. Thanks a bunch, Adel. Just look at it. The dandelions really come a long way. It wasn't long ago when it was just an empty building. Then we made a few friends. And now, it's one of the local favorites. Yeah, we couldn't have asked for more. It's not often we get to stay put in one city for this long. The Monstrums, the prisoners, the townspeople, a whole lot of fine folk here. I'll admit, I appreciate the occasional change of scenery from the usual oceans and mountains. <laughs> you of all people would understand that the most, huh? It's a great city. It's got its share of problems, like the Grimwald Knox and the Monstrum Curse. But we're all in this together. Not just you and me, but all our pals at the Dandelion. One thing at a time. Right, Adam? Hey, Adam, you okay? No. Okay, but take it easy, yeah? You probably haven't fully recovered yet. You should get some rest. I'm not sure how our adventure is gonna pan out this time. But no matter what comes at us, we'll beat it somehow, like we always do. There's still so much to see out there. So many adventures await. Yeah. Right back at you. Let's get through this in one piece, Adel. I'm looking forward to seeing what Iris has to show us. Do you know anything about it at all? Gramps, at all. Thank you for waiting. So, what do you think? You better say it looks good, or I'll stab your eyes out! Of course it does. Shantae made it special, just for yours truly. <laughs> that was very generous of him. But if Shantae was the one who made it for you, then does that mean you're... That's correct. From now on, I'll be working at the Dandelion. I'm hanging up my hat as an assassin. I'm putting it all behind me, along with my royal title. It was just a name anyway. That's a very big decision, Iris. Yes. After coming to the Dandelion, I've since learned the error of my ways. I blame the Romans for everything bad that happened to me. I spent my life running. But I'm done with that. I want to start living for myself, like all of you are. Starting from now, I'm just going to be plain old Iris. Good for you. I support your decision. 
I think it's a much better job for you than being an assassin. <laughs> yes, I think you are right. Though, I hope you don't think you're getting out of receiving a proper education. I understand that you can read and write, but there's much to learn about the world. Ugh. And if you're going to work here, you'll need to learn etiquette as well. Be sure to address Shante with respect. He is your manager now. Now you sound just like the overbearing goody two-shoes who raised me. Hmm. He was some kind of black market dealer or whatever. And he was stubborn to boot. I commanded him countless times to teach me how to kill, but he only taught me self-defense. I found out later he never intended to teach me how to be an assassin in the first place. As a favor to someone who died before I was born. The one who entrusted me to him. I see. It must have been difficult for you to part with him. You should be grateful to your parents and the man who took you in. Because of them, you have the opportunity to live an honest life. See what I mean? Overbearing! If you piss me off, I will gut you. <laughs> I thought you retired from being an assassin. Yes, I did. But... <sighs> oh, by the way, I made something for you two. You had better stay put until I get back. Ah, <laughs> this tea looks excellent. Shall we add all? <coughs> Th this tea is rather invigorating. <laughs> Got you, losers. I spiked it with the hottest spices from his spawny. I may not be an assassin anymore, but I never said I was going to be some law-abiding citizen. You had better watch what you eat around here, too. <coughs> you sure got us good. But I do hope you'll keep these practical jokes to a minimum. That's right. Just let me know. Have a moment. At all. At all. Yeah. Hmm. I'm ready and raring to go. Let me come back any time. So, um... Bye-bye! See you later! 
Yeah. I'm ready and raring to go. Well, come back any time. Step right up. Ah, you got a good eye. Okay. Wanna bye, bye See you later. Is Lee, go get them out there, darling. I see.
tastes great. Take a look. Hey, this is great. Here, it's all yours. We have accomplished our task. Our duty calls. Later then. <laughs> <laughs> 